and, and Wakiso districts. And uh, the court usually picks up uh, processes from the Office of the Administrator General. For the relevance of uh, today's theme, usually when uh, a person passes on, there's a requirement that they have to go to the Office of the Administrator General, who I would refer to as AG, to be able to hold a meeting and whether that be vetted in a view to identifying the persons who will be put on the certificate of no objection. And you'll allow me to refer to that as a corner in, uh, in the remarks. So after the meetings with uh, the AG's office, usually they are, they are sent to go and hold a family meeting with the cow, either the cow or the town clerk, and then be able to, to report back. So once they have obtained the, the corner certificate of no objection from the office of the administrator general, they can then be able to uh, file a petition and that petition will start with uh, the notice which will be published in a, a newspaper of wide circulation and usually the court insists that that newspaper should be the one which is uh, relevant within the area where the estate is located. So other requirements uh, at that point will include uh, the death certificate uh, we require the corner, the corner issued by the Office of the Administrator General. And in terms of uh, the processes, we've been working with the Office of the AG, and at that point we agreed that that corner should be expiring within one year. And I know that they may be moving to come down to about six months. Because the idea is that when you go to the Office of the AG, you're going to pick the corner, and then walk to the court. So we believe that even if you actually walked, within six months, you'll be able to walk from Georgian House to Family Division in Makinde. So we think that uh, the one year for now, and maybe in the future, the six months, should be sufficient for uh, the, the, the proposed administrators to be able to move from the office of the AG and come to court to be able to file a petition. Uh, the, the court will require the photographs of the of the deceased, as well as the photographs of the of the persons listed in the corner who are supposed to be the administrators, to be published in color. The court insists that they should be in color for ease of identification, because they have had challenges with the with the processes in terms of people uh, coming to misrepresent uh, the estate of the deceased. So currently, the court insists on. A colored photograph, which should be big enough to enable the identification process go on in line with the law. Uh, the judiciary has been uh, championing uh, the digitization process in, la in line with uh, the transformation plan. And through these processes, uh, the, the court has been able to support this process in terms of uh, uh, video link in these processes. So if uh, some people are out of the country, the court usually allows uh, for identifications via link, via Zoom, as well as uh, other applications. Uh, usually where, where uh, a widow is involved, usually the court, the court has uh, usually a soft spot that should be preferable that a widow or the widower should be able to appear before court and either consent to the grant to the people named in the corner or at least be added as the administrator. So where they consent, the court will be able to comfortably work with the persons who have been uh, listed in the corner by the office of the administrator general. Uh, the petition should be accompanied by, among other things, uh, the declaration of the petitioners. Uh, we have a certified copy of the minutes of the meeting they held at the office of the AG, as well as uh, the minutes of the meeting with the office of the town clerk or at the office of the cow, depending on the location of the 
of the petitioners and, and the estate. Uh, other requirements at that point will be the bond form. Usually the bond is supposed to be 10% of the value of the estate. So we shall insist that the value of the estate, the estimated value of the estate must be mentioned in the petition. So that is easier to, to deal with the process as the parties progress with the process of identification. Uh, regarding a petition, uh, the court usually works with the death certificate, the will of the deceased. Usually the will must be properly witnessed. And the court will want uh, the witnesses, if they are alive, to appear in court for identification and be able to, to verify, verify that will. Where one of the parties, for example, or the witnesses has been has, has, uh, passed on, the court requires a declaration or an affidavit to that effect be filed in court. Of course, uh, in terms of probate now, there's also a requirement that uh, uh, we need uh, these uh, widows and widowers to be uh, to be uh, uh, voted by the office of the AG to be able to cap down on, on uh, some of the fraud in the process of a uh, uh, grant of letters of administration as well as those of probate. Uh, this still has to be advertised uh, in the newspaper of wide circulation within the area where the estate is located. In central, then we prefer maybe Bukede or Eli Monitor or the New Vision newspaper so that uh, the public is notified about uh, your interest to apply for letters of administration for the estate of the exist so that if there are any issues regarding the estate, somebody can be able to to protect their interests in terms of uh, lodging a caveat on the on the petition. Uh, we also require uh, certified copies of the of the minutes where they have had a meeting with the AG. We want those minutes. And then, uh, in terms of uh, the caveat, following the amendment of the Succession Act, I mean, with the, with the law last year. Uh, there's the requirement that uh, once uh, you file a caveat, you must, within six months, file a suit in court to give you reasons as to why you lodged the caveat and that the court should be able to hear you out and give uh, a decision to that effect or regarding your, your issues or challenges to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the petition. Uh, secondly, uh, the petitioner is required under the law to file a suit. If the caveater does not file, then the petitioner should file the, the suit within six months. So if both of them do not file uh, uh, the suit within the six months, then the law provides that uh, both the caveat and the petition shall lapse. And usually when those lapse, the court will dismiss the application. So the party will have to come back and reinstate that petition in court. After reinstatement, the caveat cannot file a new caveat because he had the opportunity to file one. He didn't explain himself. So the court will have that dismissed and proceed with the process of uh, identification to grant letters of administration or probate to the petitioners. Uh, uh, Chief Guest, in terms of uh, identification processes, uh, the court requires that uh, we have in line uh, the identification form. We need the recommendation from the local area chairperson or the LC1, just to be sure that the person is uh, within the country and is a citizen of this country. Uh, we require the petitioners to appear. The beneficiaries who are around should also appear in court. We require the national ID original. Of course, we've had uh, challenges in this area. I'll come to this later. The registrar has to verify the original documents brought by the, by the petitioner. And then the court explains the roles and duties of the administrators to the persons who are appearing before the registrar. And then the, the registrar will send off the documents and forward the file to, to the judge for consideration. In terms of uh, letters of probate, uh, Chief Kester, the, the witnesses are required to appear as well to be able to verify uh, the will in issue where there's a will, 
because most times uh, we have uh, places where the wheels are challenged, so that usually moves to the other side of letters of administration. Uh, the law also allows uh, uh, the chief registrar or the deputy registrars of the High Court to be uh, custodians of wills. So, Mr. Vice President, if, uh, if their wills are made by, by council, they are, they are liberty to drop, they, they deposit them at, uh, at the High Court. The chief register can ably take custody of those wills and be able to release them when they are needed. Uh, our chief guest, uh, uh, the law requires that uh, once uh, letters of administration are granted, uh, the administrators must, within six months, file an inventory. An inventory is supposed to list uh, the properties of the deceased, uh, the beneficiaries, as well as uh, other requirements in, in line with the law. Uh, usually, when they are not able to file the inventory within six months, the law requires that they should be able to file an application in court for leave of court to grant them time to file the inventory outside the six months. And then in a period of one year, they're supposed to file a, a final account in court. And of course, the grant or letters of administration should be able to expire within a period of two years, within the new amendment to the Act. Uh, where the letters have expired, then it means uh, the petitioners have to start the process of, in terms of going back to the Office of the AG, getting letters for recommendation, advertising, and then come back to court to be considered for grant of letters of administration. Uh, we, the court also insists and speaks to the beneficiaries, whenever they appear in court for this grant, is that uh, they should be able to be keen on the process of the, of the management of the estate of the deceased in terms of uh, receiving their shares, as well as keeping a watchful eye on how the estate of the disease is being managed by the administrators who have been given letters of administration or probate uh, by the court, as well as uh, collectively ensure compliance with the law in terms of uh, filing uh, the inventory within time as well as filing the, the final account. Uh, in terms of uh, challenge, where somebody has a, an issue with a, a grant which has been given to an administrator or an executor, then they should be able to challenge in court in terms of filing a suit and be able to bring evidence as to why you think the administrator who holds the letters or the probate should be uh, removed from that position and the letters be given to a new person who the family having sat in a meeting again with uh, the office of the administrator general should be able to pick new people who are put on the corner to be able to facilitate that process for grant of uh, letters of administration. Uh, our chief guest, uh, the court processes do not go on as smooth as they look. As uh, uh, the vice president mentioned, the court is uh, the court is busy. The court is uh, overwhelmed by uh, applications, and in that sense, we face a number of challenges. Uh, and this relates to uh, forgery of letters of administration, uh, forgery of wills, uh, death certificates. I'm happy to see Nira here. We've been working with Nira a lot in terms of verifying uh, death certificates before, uh, before uh, the documents are forwarded to a judge for consideration of a grant of letters of administration. We've also been working with uh, Nira to verify national ID cards because uh, the court receives very many. Some come from the road behind us here. And through the training uh, supplied to us by Nira, we are able to identify the genuine death certificates, uh, genuine national IDs, and then uh, the, 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 the people who bring those cards are taken to make statements in the police, and then we'll be able to send them back to the Office of the Administrator General, because once you present a, a fake death certificate, it means you will have lied to the AG, and you have lied to court. So we usually dismiss, and then send them back to, to the AG to have uh, that meeting, and then be able to come through to the process and then back to court. So I would like to 
to thank the ULS again for giving the court an opportunity to participate in the, in the processes. We are hoping that uh, the engagement should be able to, to continue in terms of uh, uh, sensitizing the public, to be able to support the process of will making, because they know that uh, where there are wills, it means uh, the estates of the diseased persons are a little more organized as opposed to the open process where we come to, to apply for the letters of administration. So thank you very much. Oh, ugalo, 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 ugalo. Thank you, Worship. Honorable, the Honorable Samuel Lumo, uh, Olumo is the Deputy Registrar, High Court Family Division. So he sits in Makindie. Banda for what we got say, Kolero, Gabazeko, Ku Sinkanaba Purida, Tuani Rizanyo, Rachakongira, Okuani Riza, Nisekuani Rizaina. Gasida Gena Maso, Njakusaba, if you have a number plate, if this is your, if this is your number plate, UBL 618Z. UBL 618Z, kindly uh, attend to the vehicle. You are blocking people, I think, behind here. UBL 618Z, kindly um, oblige the people uh, behind us. I think you're blocking them. Let me also welcome you, uh, if you're just coming in for the first time, uh, if you're a, a lawyer just joining Pro Bono Day for the very first time, welcome aboard, and uh, we hope that you get to uh, grasp what goes on on pro bono day because on this day lawyers come to offer free services to the client so the lawyers are to my left uh, the clients are to my right katubango zekulaba lawyer and jack gamanti it means o savings o savings in 12 kumi kubango kulaba lawyer consultation fee by law is about a hundred thousand for the first hour Wanti a oze no la plida kuwerere. It means o savings e mitualo kumi. Wanga ogena mula bachi wanvo. Savings e mitualo nga vili kuasa tu. So waloya nja kusawanti. Mwoye kubugalo wa nae. Wanda wasoji waze kuruwa mwe. Mwoye kubugalo. Hii. Atina mwe wanga wakubiro waga. Nae wwe kubira kubugalo. <laughs> Totula mutuzi. Ok. Uh, let's just take you to our next item. I want to invite, in a few minutes I'll be inviting Nira. But let me tell you this. We have various partners who have made this possible. Allow me to recognize UGANET, Justice for Health, HIV, and Gender, Tubayoko Bugalo, UGANET, right here. We have LAPER, free uh, clear site for everyone, free consultation, right? Yes, so wango ingawaze kula purida, nating anama so gakuta wanya. Atikati, you are hitting two birds with one stone. So kala we purida, then ujewa no ulabechi, ulabo msawu wa maso, amina wanae. Um, let me also recognize, of course, acknowledge the Netherlands, our, uh, our sponsors, our donors for this event. Let me go to NIRA, National Information Registr Identification Registration Authority. NIRA bali wano aba national ID. Wabanga waze ku ingezibio bikuwa na gane national ID. Baba no wano. Mugenda Kubalaba, Edan Jakusaba, Mudashkanga Biri, or Omkuru Alieyo, Mr. Mahimuka Jakuja, Ayokuan, or Dachike, Muyoka, Abanyan Yoli Church Tambula. To know NSSF, to Akube Kubugalo, National Social Security Fund, always in the news um, for many, many reasons, but they're here today for you. Wango Oinevizu NSSF, Jangu, Wano. Tuna Uganda Law Reform Commission, Abakwadagana Kuyamateka. Uh, Law Development Center Legal Aid Clinic, Kwebali, Uganet, I think, Tuabani, Rizada, Islamic University in Uganda. Salaamu Alaikum. Kwebali wano, Tuabani, Rizanyo. Tulinao, Makeo University, Building for the Future. Here we are. And then uh, we have... Bana Njinjwa, Neza Makeo, Tuina School of Law, Tuina Disability Law and Rights Project, Tuina... So at this moment, Chief Guest of Walero, Abadai Nakubera, the Attorney General, Lawyer of Government, Mwami Chiruachi Wanuka, Nae Yafiri Dua, Yafiri Dua Antiwe, Sota Subede Kubera Nafiwano, Ate Mumiukawe, Deputy Attorney General, Mr. Jackson Kafuzi, Ate Ye Yafiri Dua Mamawe. Njaba saba mwetu wazo bunji, ngamba saba nesu kusawa yena, tuimiria kumaguru gafe, 
tumasema chitiwa oh, a moment of silence for the mother of the deputy attorney general please get on your feet i kindly ask you also moment of silence uh, similarly for the auntie of the uh, attorney general uh, mr kirwa kiwanuka let us just honor them honor the memory in a moment of silence may their souls rest in peace so those of us who are joining this event uh, live on TV, welcome aboard. Where have you been? We're here at the railway grounds in Kampala, in the heart of the capital. And we're, meet, we're having lawyers offer services, free service today. Lawyers, I'm told, like money. The thing about lawyers is money. They hear fees, a lawyer will get excited. If you, if you mention the word fees and the lawyer doesn't react, either call a doctor. The lawyer is very, very ill. So when a lawyer comes and says, I'm giving you free services, it means they are reaching out to you. So today is pro bono day, and we are in, going to enjoy free services. Our clients are here. Welcome aboard. Allow me at this moment to, with humility, welcome Mr. Behemuka. Uh, Mr. Behemuka is from NIRA, the guys best known for the national ID, the document which you cannot do without in this country. Mr. Behemuka will talk to us briefly. Uh, I'm giving you just two minutes just to tell us what's going on, and then we shall be good to go. If you need to visit the bathroom, please go behind here. Um, bathrooms, toilet, Ugandans like the bush. For some reason, I can't understand. Uh, just not to know toilets. So, we toilets. Osola Okulaba Nafuka Obasenfuka Muchifecho. Mr. Bahimuka from Nira. Thank you. Uh, the Chief Walker, our respective uh, guests in their various capacities. I greet you all. Uh, John Toa Bahimuka is my name from Nira. We've decided to partner with uh, the Uganda Law Society specifically on this Pro Bono Day because of their theme on succession. Succession is critical and it's incumbent that we ensure we have all our children registered within the first year of the occurrence of birth. It will save you from all the future problems that we have. So we have our service tent here. We are having birth registration. We are having death registration services. We are having national ID registration services. We are having national ID replacement services all at the railway grounds the whole of today. So our dear clients, if you have any issues with your national ID, because once you go to court and you're proceeding to apply for grants, the first document they'll ask you is the death certificate of the deceased and also your national ID. Don't go to NASA Road, just come to our tent. Like a... Uh, uh, his Worship had told you, we are working closely with the family division to wipe out forgeries of these certificates. And the forgeries, my dear colleagues, advocates, please, your role is not just a clearing and forwarding house. Once a client presents to you that death certificate, you are an officer of court. It's incumbent upon you to assure yourself of the authenticity because it also reflects bad on the advocate's firm that files these documents with these forged papers. So please come to our near offices. We are here with you the whole day. We shall let you know how you can verify these documents in your chambers. And also we are here to clarify on any matters relating to registration services. Like I say, I want to emphasize, you cannot talk about succession without properly identifying whom uh, is entitled, whom the beneficiaries are, and their registration status, and their parents. So I encourage you to come to NIRA and have these documentations in order before that unfortunate event. I stop here. Thank you. Oh, wugalo, wugalo. Thank you very much, Mr. Bahemuka. By now, most of you know that uh, getting a national ID is problem enough. If you lose it, your goose is cooked. So 
it's very important to know where to go in times like that. And uh, of course, the whole thing about birth certificate and stuff, death certificate, uh, the people to go to are right there. So, wango oinechi weuza churna chikwaga national ID, birth certificate, uh, death certificate, anything chikwaga ne nira o jagenda wali. Wanga me tufida na yowe tuwe kufido bugalo. Fida, welcome aboard. We're happy to have you on board. And um Gambia free eye testing right here in the corner. You can see them when the time comes. We need to move on. Na ye. Register our family division at Gambia and Tibubanga Oina Edamedi Wakola. You've made your will. What should I do? Where do we put it? Uh to High Court, what if register a jacuta edamedio, or bubanga or genze. Fina tuli that at some point. Eh, Gambia 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 an additional role there that we, if you were not aware, you can take advantage of. We have blood donation. Ubanga was there in the okay. Was the club pleader netting go yaga kukoga no musai. This corner here, we have blood donation about in red cross. Is that red cross? I see red, I see a cross. I hope it's red cross. Okay, red cross is here. Blood donation lawyers, apart from getting money, you can also give back to society through uh, just. Give your blood because you never know it will come back to you anyway. So lawyers, please feel free to get to give services, but also um, donate blood. At this moment, I want to. We're going to hear from the administrator general. But before that, I would like to humbly request uh, his worship, Samuel Olomo. Please come back, Honorable Samuel, and. Uh, Kindly be pleased, may it please you, your worship, to invite the Administrator General to say something, to talk to us especially about his role, the role of his office in resolving family conflicts. Your worship. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thomas Gawaya Tegule. Uh, allow me to take this uh, honor and privilege to invite uh, uh, Mr. Charles Kazibayo, who is a uh, the Administrator General of the Republic of Uganda. Mr. A.G., you're welcome to give your remarks. Oh, bugalo, bugalo, bugalo. Tumongelo, bugalo. Lawyers, let me hear the hand claps from your side. Come on. Let's give it up for him. Uh, protocol has been observed. I have five minutes, so I will... Optimumly it raises it. Uh, I thank Uganda Law Society, Mr. President, sir, and your able leadership for choosing our area of practice, which affects every citizen here in Uganda, because you can avoid other areas of law, but you cannot avoid land and succession. Thank you. My topic is the role of Administrator General in resolving family conflicts. We receive 5,000 applications every financial year in total of months for processing of inheritance. In these uh, 5,000 applications, around approximately 2,000 experience family conflicts. So you can imagine the percentage. And uh, around 90% die in tested. They don't leave a will, a valid will. So Mr. President, sir, 
I thank you that you are choosing the area of emphasizing uh, and educating people to write wills. Because when a will is written, it means that your beneficiaries are defined, it means that the property is defined, and if it is valid, even the court has no power to invalidate a valid will that complies with the statutory requirements. Now, as amended in our recent uh, Succession Amendment Act of 2022, if every uh, I can have it. Okay. If every page is signed by the two witnesses and the testator by putting their addresses, signature, and names, and of course, uh, residential holdings are exempt. So our team is in the tent with some materials, even a book on guide to writing wheels, you will approach these people. So we urge you to write wheels. It's an old concept in Uganda and elsewhere. Afanga talamye warumbe yabgaba. So we emphasize and urge you to make and write wheels. Now, when we receive these applications, our role is to intensify mediation. Because as you are aware, some of the beneficiaries meet for the first time in the Office of Administrator General. So you have, we would do a cardinal role of mediating these people uh, dear participants of recent, uh, the conflicts are reducing. Most of the conflicts have been in the past, and I think because also of uh, not being aware of the law, because when I look at the, the last financial year, we find like a out of those 2,000, we had like 10 actualizing in two court, court cases. It means that others were successfully uh, mediated and people are beginning to understand and follow the law. So one of our major roles has been able uh, guidance on mediation across uh, even uh, in our seven region offices that are in Fort Porto, uh, Barara, Arua, Guru, Soroti, uh, Mbare, and Moroto, where actually we registered zero cases in all those seven region offices. So we are doing that role of mediation, and I will urge you uh, the lawyers to participate. Mr. President, sir, as you are aware, I gave Wednesdays. Every Wednesday is a free lawyer's day. They walk into my office and we discuss free any issue, including mediation, including if you have issues with my lawyers. That is an open day and it has done miracles. So that is the, uh, an area of mediation. Another one is, the, of course, good relationships and cooperation with other stakeholders. Our, we have an excellent relations with our court, the family division. We work together. We share information. We have done this even through amendment of the laws, which have also gone a long way in ending family conflict. For example, we have demonstrated the power of an administrator. You can no longer sell property as an administrator without the consent of all 
all the beneficiaries. If they are minor children, you require the consent of their appointed guardians. So that has also gone a long way in ending family conflicts. Even in stimulating the laws and guiding the processes. There are people who have been applying for estates where people died in 1912, in 1914. Uh, we have resolved that matter. Uh, the Minister of Justice is going to communicate. Uh, the report is out. Everybody was a participant, including Uganda Law Society. So that has also been causing a lot of family conflicts where somebody seeks to administer an estate that was already administered like over a hundred years. So in that area, we have been able to contribute. We shall go on to engage with Uganda police, especially on an offense called intermediating with the property of the deceased. Before the, an estate has obtained letters of administration. We shall emphasize that, of course, it divides family, and family is an important uh, unit of, 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 of a nation. So we would want uh, that offense, we shall even engage the office of, we are already in engagement, even with the office of DPP, that that offense of intermediating where the estate is still in the office of administrator general, we need to know who is intermediating before we receive uh, 50 letters requiring our, 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 our uh, 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 information where people are going to be charged with an offense of intermediating with the property of the deceased because it accelerates conflict in the family. Before letters of administration are granted, that estate vests in the office of administrator general. So it is important that that offense which is created by administrator general's act is uh, sanctioned by the administrator general to know who is stealing from what before letters of administration are granted. So with our stakeholders engagements, we hope that the family conflicts will reduce. And lastly, where the conflicts are very severe, we intervene as a neutral party and take on administration and distribute the estate according to the laws. With those few remarks, I think with the new laws, with our cooperation and interests by every citizen, the family conflicts will substantially reduce. We are going to intensify on other processes apart from the non uh, process of letters of administration for intested succession and probate for tested succession to include making trusts where you make a trust and keep your family property intact under the management of those managers because the idea of dividing a small resource called land is also becoming outdated because it is not expanding and God is not creating any land anymore. So there is a need to have other forms uh, apart from the traditional known processes which would even include emphasis on company and, 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 and gifts when you are still alive, you make gift intervivors, what the lawyers call, uh, so that it is written and known that this property has been given so and so, registration of, of, of land as joint tenants or tenants in common. These are known principles by the lawyers. I don't want to take much of your time because my team is in the tent and the lawyers are about to start uh, helping you by giving you free services. But I want the lawyers and everyone who is here to think of alternative processes of uh, passing property from one generation to another other than when you are dead. 
you can have a, a process directed through trusts, through company, through registration of property as joint tenants or tenants in common. With those few remarks, I thank you. Oh, bugalo, bugalo, bugalo. Thank you, and Mr. General. We are grateful for your kind indulgence. Uh, just, if you're just joining us, we're here at Railway Grounds in the heart of Kampala, regional society giving back to the community through pro bono. Pro bono means uh, kuwerere. Uh, legal services, nenga kuwerere. We are joined today by Administrator General's Office. Where are those in Admin General's Office? Hey, I thought this was for only Administrator General. This, this succession planning here, <laughs> Admin General. I, I've also benefited from your legacy. Okay, how many of, where are the staff of Administrator General's Office? Where are they? I think they're, I think they're somewhere in the tent behind there. There's another tent. Okay, okay, where is NSSF? Uwango yaga kula aba Administrator General, ogena umchetia NSSF, and you'll be there. Tuina aba Nira, wali on my, on the extreme left, Nira is here. Tuina Uganda Law Reform Commission, uh, right in front of me here. Tuina NSSF, uh, next to Law Reform Commission. Tuina Justice Centers Uganda. Nabalabi wabo, Justice Centers, muliwa. Nawali wali, justice centers nawaba sanga wali, nawaba lawyer ba jakui amba mungiri abwe. Fida Uganda we wali, fida baba li wali marenge day. Welcome aboard, Uganet we wali, Uganet muliwa. Now munenga mwe kwa, bali muthi fochimu. Nenga wena we wali. Pilak, a public interest law uh, clinic of Macquarie Valley. Where are you, Pilak? Pilak muko wapi? Ha, ni mawewona hapa. Wapo, wapo. Pilak wapo, mawakili wapo. Hallelujah. Makere Law School, I, I think they must be here as well. So, they're all here. And then, blood donation. Bangamit is Mengo, uh, Mengo Rotary Blood Bank. They're the ones giving, uh, receiving your blood. So, blood donation right here behind me. And then uh, Islamic University in Uganda, Muliwa. Wali wali mukwasonda wali. We wali. And then Uganda Red Cross Society, of course. And then La Pair, free eye testing to my left. And then LDC, Legal Aid Clinic. Uh, LDC Waliwa. Wabali wali. Okay, that uh, someone called it a fiery furnace, LDC. The lawyers know why. So coming up next, we're going to listen from. The Sol Deputy Solicitor General, who is in the house, we shall be listening from our key development partner for this event uh, from the Netherlands. He'll be introduced shortly. But allow me at this moment, no, two things. Number one, Salim Hamidu, Salim Oliwa. Salim Hamidu, Oliwa. Salim Hamidu, Yaliwa. Yono. Eh? Salim, ah uh, ah, uh, see a goli. Oh, you know, you know. Salim, yes, zenga ganti. A you lawyer, we are only denga muita ngamu muita Fatuma. So if your counsel and your name is Fatuma, uh, do you recognize this client? If you do, please indulge him kindly. Uh, he said, "For me, I want to see Fatuma." He was very specific and categorical. Ah, tomorrow we will Fatuma ngaja council member. Hey, so Ojamuzako, Nigo, Mijafuna Kade, search it to say. Okay. Okay. Advocates, please resume your seats. We shall be attending to you uh, in about 15 minutes when the activities are opened up. Advocates, may you kindly resume your seats because we have two more um, addresses. Allow me with humility, therefore, to welcome. Nyinimu, uh, the president of the Uganda Law Society, our hands together for our hands together, Mr. Bernard Dorundo. Please come and greet the people. President of the Uganda Law Society, Onuyakuljaba lawyer, Mu Uganda, no, so Simon to Wabali Joe, Mkamawangi, Kwaniriza. Wewe ba lenyesi sevo MC, 
nja kusoka ndoza nja kuogera mu luzungu manyi ntino twina ba member ba public olwalero wano so nja kusoka njogere mu luzungu mali ate njogere mu luganda okubanga njogera ku nsonge ezitulese wano olwalero the deputy solicitor general the deputy head of mission your worship the administrator general the executive the secretary law council the deputy administrator general the head legal aid ldc the executive council of the uganda law society members of the uganda law society members of the fourth estate members of the public you're all welcome to our i think it should be the ninth pro bono day celebrations on behalf of the uganda law society i take this opportunity to welcome you all to the 14th it's the 14th annual pro bono day of the uganda law society first and foremost i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our generous donors the netherlands embassy banange nsaba mukubireko obugalo netherlands embassy thank you for supporting this project the uganda law society is not just an association of legal professionals it's a beacon of justice equality and society progress our mandate is not just about advancing the cause of rule of law building the professional capacity of our members our mandate also includes access to justice and today we are contributing to that mandate of helping the public access justice so we engage in pro bono work not just out of an obligation but out of an understanding that as lawyers we exist in a community and that community includes our clients and that that we must participate in providing legal services on on free on free on on on, on at 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 no payment so that is why it is called pro bono so today if you're a client here you're going to be able to access legal services without paying a fee the objectives of the legal aid project align perfectly with our vision first and foremost we aim to bridge the gap between those who require legal assistance and those who can provide it our legal aid project also strives to enhance legal literacy among undeserved communities so as uganda law society we feel that it's an obligation for us to be able to provide legal services to the indigent to the poor to those who cannot be able to afford legal services so on a day like this i want to thank our members of the uganda law society i know that you are coming in big numbers we want to thank you for coming to participate in providing these legal services today is not a day of long speeches and therefore i want to close by again thanking everyone who is here um, but also particularly thanking the vice president who has been leading uh, the legal aid and pro bono project on behalf of the council so thank you vice president and the members of the council uh, for being able to lead i also want to thank the secretariat and the management team and the legal aid project team for being able to ensure that all activities reaching to this day are held well so i want to thank the management and the staff of the legal aid project i also want to thank the the, the administrator general and all our partners we have nira we have nssf we have uganet we have fida we have pilac we have legal aid project of uh, the law development center let's thank all these partners for being able to to come and support us can we thank them <laughs> lastly let me thank the membership that has come and is going to spare i think the whole day almost the whole day to provide legal services to the indigent to provide legal services to those who cannot be able to afford them to show people how to write wills 
as a way of trying to facilitate and help in the challenges that are affecting uh, the judiciary. Uh, if you look at the numbers coming through the court. Oh, okay. So, and to thank them for, for being able to, to, to participate today. The reason we have focused on the succession theme, and I know that the Vice President had been able to explain and the Administrator General has also given numbers, is that most of our cases are related to land or family. Wherever there is a family dispute, there is a connection to land. And if you look at the cases that we have as the legal aid uh, project of the Uganda Law Society, you realize that most of them also arise from the fact that people do not know how to write wills. If they knew how to write a will, perhaps we would not have almost 50% of the cases that are filed with us. So that is the reason that we have decided to focus on how to write wills. Our belief is that when we educate the public on how to write wills and how to deal with the succession challenges, we'll be doing two things. One, reducing the cases that we have at the Uganda Law Society, but also number two, quite importantly, helping to deal with the number of cases that are being filed at the family court. And if we can deal with the number of cases that are being filed at the family court, we shall also be able to help to deal with the backlog that is affecting the judiciary. So that is the reason for the theme, and that is why we have focused on this theme. So with those few remarks, allow me to thank you once again and I take the opportunity to invite the deputy head of mission to come and make a few remarks, who has been very gracious and grateful to us to sponsor this event. Thank you. Luganda, hold, sorry, 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 sorry. Let me, can you get a team Luganda? Eran jogera ku backline to bafalwalero abazolwalero. Nti fenge chivina cha Uganda lo society, olnako lwalero, tusazewo, okubanga, tu igiriza bantu, okuandika, echiramo. Chino chiva ku cases ze tu ina fenga Uganda lo society, ne cases ze tulaba ku family court. Cases ze zisinga ze tulabie abantu gabale tamu Uganda lo society. Ziku atagana na family ate ne netaka buli wabe rawo family dispute olabange ensonga zetaka nazo zikolachi zijamu naye fetula byentino okubanga bwe tuna yamba ko tubenga tuyigiriza abantu okuwandika ekiramo kuloko babwo wandike ekiramo obolaga nti ebintu byo bijja kubanga bigabanya mu ngeri jobanga osimye etaka binobyo nabyo nabyo bango gabye bijja kubanga nga 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 bigabana kato muntu bwabera ne kiramo kiba kitegeza nti ki ja ku reducing ku disputes ezinabera wo muntu bwabera nga taina chi nga taina kiramo so era njagala mukozi so mukisa gunno mwenna abali wano oku approaching aba member ba febo nabali wano bazze wano ba member kamba sabe bambi mutu take omukono ababalabe Members, just put your hands up so that the public can see you. But member of the Fibabo, Aba Singa Batu Deno, Aba Landoza Balieno, Eda Tukirako member, Yena Jojo Kusobolo Kutukirako, Abenga Kuyigiriza. Fetulo Zantino, Uganda Law Society, Butuna College, Tuja Kuredu Singa, Kumisango, Ejiri Filed, Mu Family Court, Tetu Redu Singe, Nebak Log, Erikuchi, Eriku Family Court. So, Nature and bad day neighbors, but never never stakeholder, but they were not worried. Oh, Jagala Kwebaza Uganda Law Reform Commission, Jagala Kwebaza Administrator General, Jagala Kwebaza Uganet, Jagala Kwebaza Nira, Aban Nira and Abobali were no, but boy nature is even a ideal to gain the wala, gain the wali, Babenga Bakuya, Babenga So, Chetuko Zol Walero, Guy Uganda Law Society, we could later ban to Bona. But stakeholder bona abali mu 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 bintu ebi kuatagana ne chidamo ne bintu ebi kuatagana ne succession tu benga tu ya mbaa abantu bafe o kubanga 
services zibo tukirira olwalero wonawe bali so njagala kubeba za mwe na bazo olwalero okujja okubanga mu 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 participating mu mu kolo muno era tu 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 basaba uh, mukozeso mukisa guno mubenga mu mu mubenga baba wa uh, legal services olwalero olwalero tugenda kusasula echo kanchi demo olwalero legal service je tugendo ba tusia kusasulira chova tujiita pro bono so mba saba mukozeso mukisa guno mubenga musavingwa um doza byebyo mu luganda njagala kusaba deputy head of mission of one netherlands embassy aje a a atweko obubaka obuva mu netherlands embassy netherlands embassy yetu yambye ko okubanga etu wensimbi okuteka olnakuruno the head of mission please come and give your remarks omugeni ngabwa ja wango oyaka tuwa yo kumusai ngamaliriza osolo kujawa na mukasonda no wayo omusai blood donation in this corner honorable biri bomoha deputy solicitor general the president and members of the executive council of the uganda law society honored guests esteemed members of the uganda law society fellow advocates of justice ladies and gentlemen it is with great privilege and immense enthusiasm that I stand here before you, representing the Netherlands Embassy in Uganda, a steadfast partner and donor of the Uganda Law Society. As the head of corporation, I am deeply inspired by the commitment and dedication that this society, society embodies, tirelessly advocating for the cause of justice and striving to better the lives of those you serve. As a lawyer by training who specializes in human rights and human rights defenders, I personally relate to your cause. The rule of law ensures safety and prosperity, and everybody deserves the best representation, the best representation possible to navigate the sometimes difficult waters of the law. Today we gather under the banner of a theme that holds profound significance understanding succession as a means to pr protect pr property rights and end family conflicts. In a world fraught with discord and disputes, addressing the complexities of succession takes center stage as a, as a path to ensuring not only the rightful distribution of assets, but also the preservation of harmonious family bonds. So allow me to draw inspiration from the Netherlands where a robust legal framework has helped countless families navigate the intricate web of succession. Through transparent and efficient processes, the Netherlands has ensured that property rights are upheld and conflicts are minimized. It's a testament to the power of legal systems in fostering stability and unity within families and communities. Beyond our borders, the world overflows with stories of both triumph and tribulation in the realm of succession. We witness nations struggling to balance tradition and modernity, with property rights often hanging in the balance. Yet we also see remarkable instances of success where societies have embraced legal reforms to secure property rights and thereby empowering families and reducing conflicts. As my father, who was a notary in the Netherlands, once said, the law provides good night's sleep. If he could ensure succession in a predictable manner, his clients would have peace of mind and harmony in the family, and therefore a good night's sleep. But today is not just about understanding the challenges. It's about recognizing the power of pro bono services in shaping a just and equitable society. Lawyers who dedicate their time and ex expertise to those who cannot afford legal representation are the unsung heroes of justice. Pro bono work has the remarkable ability to level the playing field, offering a glimmer of hope to the marginalized and the vulnerable. The advantages of pro bono services extend far beyond the courtroom. They pave the way for social transformation bridging gaps in access to justice and prom promoting community well-being. 
lawyers who gave their time freely uphold the very essence of our shared commitment to justice, echoing the values of the Law Society in Uganda and the Netherlands Embassy that we hold there. In our partnership with the Uganda Law Society, the Netherlands Embassy stands firmly in support of your unwavering dedication to pro bono work. Together we bolster the foundations of justice, foster the economic empowerment, and build a brighter future for all Ugandans. As the saying goes, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. By collaborating, we ensure that justice knows no bounds and prosperity reaches the very corner and every corner of this great nation. In closing, let us embrace the lessons of Uganda, the Netherlands and the world as we work to understand succession, protect property rights and end family conflicts. Let us continue to champion the cause of pro bono services, recognizing them as a beacon of hope that guides us towards a more just and equitable society. So thank you for your dedication and may our collective efforts yield, your f yield a future where justice and prosperity prevail for all. Thank you. Obgalo, obgalo, obgalo. We will know Omkulu, Deputy uh, Yamuka, Head of Mission, or Netherlands Embassy. Agamat name with Namateka, Atina ye, in Gayeku with a Nyoku into via Denberi Obun to our human rights. So, we truly call an obvious now. I will see me in your Naganti, Temujango. So, but when Zanyo, Ne Kanayongere, Okwani is a Mukulu Law Society, President Banado Wundo at Tuale Maso, Muchintu. Uh, echisembayo ngatuli wano kamba juki zenti omusai wanga wika kutuwe omusai jangu wano otuwe omusai just paint yoka siku na itubake na gumala mo just ka paint kamuko ka kaja kutumala uh, then weyo ngereyo neka soda wekali orumale ukuwe omusai ngabo kwa yoka soda eh ngugendi rao nawe kuganti eh, intendeke tafali kugwanga liange president wana daundo webale sebo mc um kanso ke to alom kisago no oku yani uh, deputy solicitor general okujia uh, benga ina o uh, gambo bia tuako uh, uh, representing the attorney general Olwalero. The deputy solicitor general, it's my singular honor to invite you to speak to the public and to the members of the law society. Tumani rize no bugalo wamu anguka. Obugalo bugalo bugalo. The deputy solicitor general ayoke na kunafu. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the President of the Uganda Law Society, the Deputy Head of Mission, Head Corporation, Netherlands Embassy in Kampala, Your Worship, the Deputy Registrar, High Court, Family Division, the Administrator General, Secretary Law Council, the leadership of the Legal Aid Clinic, distinguished members of the Uganda Law Society, esteemed colleagues, our other partners in development, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think it's still morning, good morning. I bring you greetings from the Honorable Attorney General and generally the Attorney General's chambers. I see some of my colleagues are here and would like to pass on the apologies of the Honorable Attorney General who has not been able to join us this morning. And I think the MC ably explained why. Now, before I joined the Attorney General's office, I served in several other offices and participated in organizing many events. I know it takes commitment, it takes diligence, it takes resources. It requires excellent multitasking and networking skills. Uh, Mr. President, I have seen all these qualities and skills demonstrated here, and admittedly, this is a well-organized event, so congratulations to the Uganda Law Society. I also congratulate all of us for making it to the early morning walk, for those who did. We can all say that we had a gym for the week today. Now, progressively, the Pro Bono Day continues to be an exciting event that we look forward to attending with the members of the Uganda Law Society. Admittedly, the Uganda Law Society team has outdone itself in especially organizing this 14th edition. 
The day's activities are well thought out and the theme most befitting. Our theme for today, as stated, is understanding the succession process as a means to protect property rights and end family conflicts. As you've heard, succession is a complex area of law that requires careful consideration and understanding in order to ensure smooth transitions and harmonious family relationships. A distortion in this area can easily be catastrophic, not only for families, but for the nation's social and economic stability. If we help our society to understand the succession process, we would have done more than half the part needed to reduce cases of emotional distress, family and social structure breakdown. The other half still lies within our ambit, and that is providing a platform for appropriate dispute resolution mechanisms. A valid will is key in succession planning, serving as a roadmap for the distribution of assets and ensuring the testator's wishes are implemented. Is there a way beyond the walls of law firms that our citizens can be sensitized on the role of a valid will? In the absence of a will, do Ugandans know there is a process of honorably and fairly distributing the property of a deceased person? If we answer in the affirmative, our job will be done. But just in case our answer is a no, what measures can we employ to educate the population? To my colleagues in the profession, we who are competent legal professionals have a duty to guide citizens through the process of drafting a comprehensive and legally binding will, reducing the likelihood of disputes and ensuring people's property rights are honored. A valid will requires a transparent and efficient probate system to ensure protection of property rights and the prevention of family conflicts. It is essential that the probate process is streamlined and accessible to all citizens regardless of their socioeconomic background. Simplifying legal procedures will make any probate system accessible, fair, expeditious, and not susceptible to corruption. We cannot ignore the role of other players in protecting property rights and ending family conflicts, but a great deal of this burden will be alleviated by we, the legal professionals. The government of Uganda is committed to ensuring a conducive legal environment for all its citizens. We, and I've seen Law Reform Commission here, regularly review and update our laws and regulations to ensure that they are in line with the societal changes and evolving circumstances. Indeed, it's in light of this that the Succession Act was reviewed and amended to principally address those provisions that were declared unconstitutional and discriminatory. As with all other matters of the law, we shall always rely on you, colleague professionals, to deliver the essence of this law home. Some questions came to mind as I prepared for this day. Allow me to share these questions with you and perhaps challenge you and myself to reflect upon them and maybe find answers for the next 15th edition of the Pro Bono Day. One, what can the Uganda Law Society do consistently to reduce and even avoid the lengthy and costly court battles over property? How can the succession legal regime and the practice provide for unique family structures and the diverse cultural practices? The third issue that came to mind is there a vibrant mechanism of ensuring compliance to court orders regarding succession matters. How many Ugandans know what a valid will is and what can we do about those numbers? I do strongly urge my colleagues in the legal fraternity to embrace pro bono activities both individually and as law firms. This is one of the ways that we as a profession can give back to the society that has heavily invested in us. 
understand that the Law Council and indeed the law so Uganda Law Society have created a, platfo a platform and I urge all of us to embrace that platform. And now before I turn this into a think tank day, allow me to appreciate Mr. Bernardo Wundo, my good friend, the president of the Uganda Law Society and his council for providing good leadership to the Law Society. To the CEO, Mr. Moses Okwalinga and your team, your diligent work is evident and is truly appreciated. Thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, it has been a great honor spending this Friday morning with you. Thank you for your kind attention for God and my country. Tumongere Obugalo, Deputy Solicitor General, Mr. Pius Perry Biribonwa, Binwoha, ye Solicitor General, uh, Deputy Solicitor General wa Government. Olualero tulimu ifobinji, uh, e gulu jetuli, in e gulu city council yard, um, e ginger jetuli, e soroti jetuli, e kabale jetuli. Tulimu ifobinji olualero, so wanga olimu ifebio, osolo genda nolaba lawyers, huwerere. Neva kuyamba, no lavanti, and songayo, but you cause a call. Oklava lawyer, usually consultation, you go to our kumi. They go to Gamba and tell, oh, Genda Yobu Genzi, or saving game to our Joe, kumi. Kamba, just Kamba Julia, if we tuli Murero, a Kampala Tuluano, railway grounds, or Tuluano, Ku Masindi, Masindi Tuli, Chief Major Scott Masindi, Jetuli, Embarara, Mbarara University grounds. If you're in Arua, we are in OPM grounds. If you're in Ginger, we're the High Court grounds. Gulu, Gulu City Council Yard. Uh, Soroti, Legal Aid Clinic of ULS on Odele Road. E Kabale, Tuliku, Sovan Square. Kabarole, that's Fort Porto. Tuliku, Balia Road, uh, Green Belt, Fort Porto. Uh, so, Mufumi, you know, now Gulu, Soroti, Kabale, uh, Kabarole, Jetuli, Mbarara, Arua, Ginger, Masindi, and of course, here in Kampala. If you're joining us on TV, here on UBS, on NBS Live, uh, well, welcome aboard and hope that you enjoy what has been, no doubt, a great day. So we're living here at 2 o'clock, Tumala Samunana. Between now and then, tuja kwani zaba lawyer, babenti bakuata ganebe client babwe. So wanga oze kulaba lawyer, tuja kwani riza. Oja kulaba lawyer, aja kufilinga form. Baina, lawyers, please make sure you have a form. Uh, in which you register the name of the client, the summary of their problems, and a recommendation on what needs to be done. Uh, please be as detailed as possible so that you give the best possible available solution to our wonderful clients. So, but client of to one is a new to Savanti, just feel at home. Uh, don't worry. At this moment, I want to welcome the chief guest. The invited guests also to have a group photo here. Uh, cameramen, uh, Wallow Society, Navalabaze, please uh, come here and organize us. President Bernardo Wundo, I'll, invi I'll invite you to bring your team here for the photo opportunity. And then as they do that, I'll be requesting the Bopilida Bafe, Ngatuba Savano Wetuwa Zobunji. You come here, pick a client, have time with them, and then you'll be good to go. Remember to register, you have two CLE points, please don't miss them. Uh, Law Council can be a tough place to visit when you have no CLE points uh, to renew your PC. So if you're here, please make sure that you get on the register. Two, two CLE points down and you'll be good to go. Uh, photographers, mutuwa wuli wano, tu imida tutia, tu koze tutia. Ndawa angawa koze front line, atinga chinzo buta jaburo I think... Um, on a gantibali, okay?